Hey, welcome back to our Tips for Tuesday. This week we're going to cover or continue our uh, greasing the hips episodes. Last week we covered the posterior chain. This week we're going to go into the anterior chain. So we're going to talk about the structures in the front part of the body. We're going to go over how to smash and mash uh, those tissues, those restricted tissues in the front part, using a couple different implements that you have at your disposal or that we have in the gym here. And then we're going to take those um, tissues that we just smashed and mashed and then show you how to mobilize and floss them with, again, a couple different implements that we have here at our disposal at the gym. Uh, so look, here's what we're looking at is when you are in, you know, we always talk about sitting, and we just know that in today's society we see, um, you know, a lot of people throughout the day, they're in a sitting environment, whether it's they're in the car a lot, uh, going from A to B, uh, they're sitting at a desk, uh, what have you, all right? So, you know, that's just a real, that's just real, that's fact now in life. So when you come into the gym, we like to spend some time opening up the hips and getting you prepped up for any type of work that we do in here. Uh, so this is my prop here for this week. So we just got a piece of TheraBand here. And this represents uh, our psoas, all right, our psoas and, and iliacus. So two deep abdominal wall muscles uh, that are hard to reach, uh, and they're not visual to the naked eye. So, you know, if you just want to observe, this is what, if you can imagine stripping away of the abdominals, this is what... Basically, it looks like the, the psoas muscle attaches on the lumbar spine and connects into the femur and the hip, and the iliacus goes from the hip into the femur. So the primary motions are hip flexion. So if this is your psoas, right, and you're, and you're standing here, it's taut, all right, stretched out. If I sit down, okay, you see what happens to the psoas. So I'm here, I go into a seated position, and see how it goes into a slack position here. All right, that's a good representation of what happens to the muscle inside your abdomen, your psoas. If I'm in this position for a good amount of the day, it's going to be in the slack position, and it's going to tighten and stiffen up in this position here. Now at the end of the day, right, I want to go to the gym, or I want to work out, or I want to go outside and run, or what have you, and I get into this position here, right, and I try to stand, and I've been here for eight hours, and it's like, I'm trying to ratchet that up, all right, and it's taut, okay, and it's fine to walk around in, all right, but now if I want to go into some extension work, whether it's running, okay, uh, or rowing, or whatever you're going to be doing, uh, chances are there's going to be some hip flexion and extension that's going to be past. Here's neutral, okay, some hip flexion and extension. All right, I need to work on this tissue that has been in the slack position throughout the day, okay. So we start off with a couple of implements that we have here. Uh, Kat, if you don't, can you toss me a lacrosse ball, please? So first thing we're going to do is work on gut smashing. How do we get into that deep tissue? <clears throat> so a couple of different ways we do it is we'll take our, our buddy here, lacrosse ball. And here's the thing. Here's something I'm going to recommend is I would not do this stuff after eating a meal. All right? Not good. All right? Because we're going to get into this deep tissue here, and if you got a belly full of food, not going to feel good. All right? So that's just a little tip. All right? So we're going to take our lacrosse ball, and you're going to find your belly button, and you're going to come about two inches off, all right, and you're going to place the kettlebell on that lacrosse ball. All right, and the kettlebell is just serving as, if you will, the hands of the massage therapist. It's pressing in, all right, and from this position here, you're taking a deep breath in and relaxing, and you're trying to picture as if you're trying to absorb the lacrosse ball into your stomach, into your belly. Once you find some hot spots, all right, you want to sit on it, and you want to kind of move that kettlebell around and mash them out. All right, and don't stay on that one spot. You know, go hunting and exploring into that lower abdomen region and start smashing out that tissue with the lacrosse ball and the kettlebell. All right, that would be a lower level version. Okay, so that's something you would want to start off with. And then you can move into using things where you're lying in a prone position and you're using your, using your body weight. Uh, we'll use this as alpha ball, but, you know, you don't have to invest in something like this. It's not that expensive, but you can get a softball, same type of thing, same size. And you're going to get it on in this position here and lay on it. So you're going to put it into that same spot, belly button off to the side, laying on it. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is just take some deep breaths and let it sink into my abdominal tissue as I'm working into it. All right, and, once, and then I'm going to move side to side, swiveling the hips. I'm going to find and hunt. For some, for some nasty parts. And when I find them, I'm just sitting on there and I'm taking some deep breaths and letting it release. Also, same side, I'll take my leg and I'll do some internal external rotation of the hip. That'll get some uh, 
some, some parts of, as well, the tissue matching that out. All right, so I'm going to spend anywhere from two to five minutes per side working that tissue. Okay, if that's not getting it, all right, and you want to get medieval, all right, you take your kettlebell and you're going to use the handle as the mash piece. So if I'm here, I'm going to work on my right side. I'm going to turn the handle like so, all right, and you're going to go from your hip bone down into your inguinal crease. So it works into a diagonal here. So you want to trace that with the kettlebell. All right, so I'm going to work that kettlebell in. Right there. And I'm just going to lay on that handle. Okay, now look, you don't want to just plop down and put all your body weight on there. You want your legs in contact with the ground, arms in contact with the ground. You slowly lower your body onto the handle. And then, again, you're trying to absorb the handle into your belly. And you're just moving around. Okay, hunting for that restricted tissue that's there. And again, I'm going to pick up my leg and I'm going to do some internal external rotation bias. And that's also going to help release some of that restricted tissue that we're talking about working on. Okay, so that's working the deep psoas and iliacus muscles. The other thing we're going to talk about is moving on down the chain <clears throat> into the quads. So we're going to take our barbell here. Here's one way we like to do it. We're going to get a kind of V-seat posture here. You're going to take the sleeve of the barbell, and you're going to start up into the deep part of the hip. And you're just going to take this bar and roll it down. And make sure you relax. If you're tightening and tensing your quad, you are not going to knead into that tissue like you need to. You want to relax, all right? It's again, if you were to go to a massage therapist, you're not going to be tense while they're working on you. You've got to be relaxed so that their hands can knead into you. Same thing with the sleeve of the barbell. All right, you want to be relaxed so that it gets into the tissue here. And you're just working here. When you find a hot spot, you can do some right to lefts and really mash that, that piece out, floss it out. Okay, if that's not hitting it, right, you can take, and when you want to get a little nastier, you take this, the protruding piece of the barbell here, and you put that on. That's going to be a more targeted piece that can really light up some trigger points there and release that. All right, just make sure you're doing this while you're doing it, so you're covering up that pain cave face that we talked about. Okay, so that's quad, but you can also get into the adductors too, so the groin. So if you want to go here into this position here, you can get into the adductors as well too. That plays a big role in uh, low back pain as well and greasing up the hips. Okay, so that's smashing and mashing. Now how do we move on to mobilizing and flossing those tissues that we just smashed? Okay, so we want to start off with getting the psoas and the iliacus. And we're going to start off with doing some banded hip extension. So we got a band attached to our pole here. We're going to step into it, and you're going to pull it up to just below the butt. So where the, where the hamstrings meet the butt, where that crease is, that's where the band is going. You want to take a big step out, a lot of stretch on that band, drop your knee down, and put your foot flat on the ground. This leg is supporting. All right, here you want a nice tall posture. We don't want to get into an overextended position here. You want to be in a neutral posture position. Make sure when you're here, you want to tighten up this glute. So left leg, left glute tight, and I'm working that hip extension bias. And then also, when I'm in this position here, I'm going to lunge into it just so I get deeper into that psoas. Right? As I lunge into it, I'm going to get a deeper stretch higher up into the chain. From here, I can also take my arm and raise it up. Okay, so from my fingertips down into my knee, I'm stretching all the way through this chain here. Okay, another thing you could do here is add another band, take your foot here, ground the band into the ground with your foot, and then press the band up overhead. Okay, so now I'm locked in, okay, head, or, uh, fingertips to toes, and now I've got a nice stretch going through here. And I'm going to lunge into this and let the band open up my arm and shoulder. Okay, so that's just a couple variations there. If you want to get into deep extension, okay, true hip extension, you come here to that lunge position, hands on the ground, and now you're anchoring this foot down, okay, and you're driving your hip, you're contracting your glute, and you're driving your hip into the ground, working on that true hip extension, okay. So that's going to be your psoas iliacus stretch. If I want to get the quads involved, so I want to move down the chain, get into the quads, we're going to do what we call the couch stretch. Okay, this is again all Kelly, Kelly Starrett stuff. So we're just going to take his stuff and use it. <clears throat> what we're going to use is a wall or a box or a couch. And you're going to take your knee. You're going to try. The goal is to get it into the corner here, foot flat. 
all right? But check it out. This is actually my left side surgical knee. I just had surgery on this a while back ago. So I don't have the flexibility or range in this knee yet. So I'm going to pop it out a little bit. I'm going to take this leg and come out here. And then I'm going to go upright. Okay, again, you don't want to get into hyperextension. You want to be in a nice neutral position here. Okay, and the goal is to try to get eventually heel to button. You can see I don't have that range yet. Okay, and then again, you want to try to get knee into the corner here if you can. But if you have folks that are restricted and tight like I am on this one particular side, you're going to bump out the knee a little bit. Okay, again, tight glute here in this position. You don't want to be relaxed. The tight glute will help support the low back. So you're going to be in here. All these stretches, we're going to hang out for a minute to two minutes. All right. You want to take that and you want to ramp that up a little bit. You can use the band and go into that banded hip extension position. All right, anchor this down, drop it down. So now I got best of both worlds here. I got a good quad stretch here in the, in the couch position. And then also I got this banded distraction working on my psoas. And I can lunge into this position as well too. Okay, another thing I'll try to do is work on some twists. All right, and just hitting different corners and pockets of those muscles. Okay. <clears throat> Last thing we're going to cover is if you guys want to follow me over here, Work on those adductors. Okay, we're gonna get you against a wall here. And a couple keys here is you wanna take your tailbone and you wanna tuck it right into the corner of the wall. So you don't wanna be out in slouch position here. Take your tailbone, tuck it into the corner. Bring your feet in, should be touching. Okay, as close to your body as you can. Take kettlebells, you can use sandbags. You can get a friend, help you down. Right, but we'll take kettlebells and we'll put them on the knees and thighs. Take a deep breath in, let it out. And then we'll just let those fall to the floor as best you can. All right. So tailbone, shoulder blades, head against the wall. A little namaste stuff going on here. Right, just hang out here for a couple of minutes. Deep breaths. With each breath, try to let the knee get closer and closer to the ground. Right, once you're able to do that, you just bring the feet in closer to the body, you're gonna get more of an adductor stretch going from there, okay? All right, so that's your tips for this week. Again, you do some posterior anterior chain, pick a couple pieces out each day. That's gonna help with some low back pain that you have, some restricted hip uh, muscles that you might have throughout the day from being in a seated position. Definitely some things to look at doing before doing physical activity, you know, whether it's running, CrossFit, anything in the gym, some good, some good pieces for you to work on there, all right? Okay. Next week, we'll, uh, we'll cover the next tips for Tuesday. See you then.